Hello and welcome to today's video. In this video I'm going to be talking about books that feature or talk about mental health. If I've timed this correctly then this video will be going up during mental health awareness week which does just seem like the perfect time to put out something like this. Now I am only talking about books that I've read today so there will only be eight books that are spoken about but these are all books that I have read. However, I will not be giving my rating of the books and I will not be saying if I think the books have good representation or bad representation as to be honest, like I just don't feel like that's up to me to decide. So these are all books that I have read and enjoyed that have some form of mental health representation. But in terms of like opinion, I'm gonna be leaving it there. For this video, I have one poetry book two middle grade books, two graphic novels and three YA slash new adult books. I would class them as YA but because the content is quite heavy some people may not. Without further ado let's get into the books. So first of all the poetry book. For this we have Pangea. Pangea is a collection of poetry about working through the trauma inflicted on a body. Whether the trauma comes from a person, a country or from within, it is the act of learning to be whole in a broken body, a broken world. It is a collection of tales told through generations of stories hidden beneath skin. Pangea is a poetry book by Henna Mian. It is about all sorts of trauma faced throughout life and this talks about mental health in a way, in terms of how trauma can affect your mental health. For me, I found this book very realistic and impactful and the way in which it spoke about mental health was very raw and honest and you can very much tell that this comes from the author's experience. So, on to middle grade. First up we have OCD Daniel. A middle grade by Wesley King and as you can tell by the total this book is about OCD and specifically OCD from a younger person's perspective and a young person who is just living with this every day and I would say that the book is realistic because the author used his own experiences to write it and because it is a middle grade it is very easily readable. Daniel is the backup punter for the Erie Hills Elephants, which really means he's the water boy. He spends football practice perfectly arranging the water cups and imagining what would happen if monsters attacked the field. Actually, he spends most of his time hoping no one notices his strange little habits. He calls them zaps, avoiding writing the number six, for example, or flipping a light switch on and off dozens of times over. He finds comfort in working on his novel titled The Last Kid on Earth, but mostly he hopes no one notices that he might be crazy. Daniel's life takes a bizarre turn when he gets a note. I need your help, it says, signed fellow star child, whatever that means. Suddenly, Daniel, a total no one at school, is swept up in a mystery that might change everything for him. With great voice and grand adventure, this book is about feeling different and finding those who understand. Then we also have No Fixed Address. Again, a middle grade book. This deals with mental health in a different way to most as this is presented as being viewed through a child's eyes. Our main character sees his mother's mental health struggles. And I'm not going to lie, I'm only halfway through this one, I haven't quite finished it. Um, but as of right now, it's not exactly clear if the main character recognises what is going on with his mum or if he just sees it as like her normal self and honestly like I'm still not sure exactly what his mum's like diagnosis is or even if we're going to get one so yeah it's very interesting and it's a really fun read. Felix Knutson and his mum Astrid have a secret. They are living in a van Astrid promises it's only till she finds a new job and begs Felix not to breathe a word. So when Felix starts at a new school, he does his best to hide it from his friends, even though his home has some serious downsides, like no privacy, heating, space and worst of all, no bathroom. But Felix has a plan to turn his and Astrid's lives around, 
all he needs is a little look and a lot of brain power. So next up we have graphic novels and I'm sure this one won't surprise anyone as it is very popular and it is Heartstopper, especially volumes three and four. This is a graphic novel series by Alice Oseman and it talks about eating disorders, self-harm, psychiatric wards and a little bit of OCD as well and even though a lot of the content included in these could be considered dark, they're spoken about in such a positive way. I feel like it's very real and it's a great, slightly more light-hearted way to show the reality of mental health struggles. I don't have a blurb to read for these because this is three and four but for book one we eventually have two boys meet, two boys like each other, two boys really like each other and that's where it starts but yeah three and four is where we really start to get that mental health representation. Then next up another graphic novel is Monster Mind. This is a graphic novel about anxiety and self-doubt. It depicts all of the monsters that we deal with in our heads and it's the author's personal account so it is good representation as it's his representation so it's very real and personal to him and his experiences. Then moving on to YA, first off I'm putting Finding Audrey. This is an oldie but a goodie. Um, I'm not going to say exactly what is being represented in this as it isn't spoken about for a large proportion of the book but it is a mental illness. It's a YA book so it's not too heavy and there are also some uplifting things and kind of like a secondary romance storyline going on throughout the book as well. We follow Audrey and her struggles with day to day life. Audrey can't leave the house, she can't even take off her dark glasses inside the house. Then her brother's friend Linus stumbles into her life. With his smile and his funny notes he starts to entice Audrey out again. Well, Starbucks is a start. Laugh, dream and hope with Audrey as she learns that even when you feel like you've lost yourself, love can still find you. Then we have Queenie. This is a book about mental health and the exploration of that but also with how that looks within cultures and when the culture that you're a part of doesn't completely understand it. And in this book we get really good insight into therapy and the realities of talking about mental health with a professional. I think one of the great things about this book is we get to see Queenie in so many situations and sometimes she's okay and sometimes she isn't and that's okay. Meet Queenie, journalist, catastrophist, expressive, aggressive, loved, lonely, enough, a darkly comic and bitingly subversive take on life, love, race and family. Queenie will have you nodding in recognition, crying in solidarity and rooting for this unforgettable character every step of the way. So then last but not least we have Yoke. This is one of my more recent reads and I will say that if you are going to read this book check the trigger warnings. I mean do this for all of the books in this video not just this one. You should always check the trigger warnings, the content warnings. It's a really good thing to look out for and we want to protect ourselves and our mental health when reading but especially for this one I think it's important. The main two things we're dealing with in this book are cancer and eating disorders and this is definitely, for me at least, the most difficult to read book out of all of these. Uh, it's still amazing and worth it, but it does go very like dark in places. So Jane and June are nothing alike. June's three years older, a classic firstborn, no or knock with a problematic finance job and an equally soulless apartment, according to Jane. Jane is an emotionally stunted, self-obsessed basket case who lives in squalor, has egregious taste in men and needs to get to class and stop wasting mum and dad's money, if you ask June. Once Vickers thieves, these sisters who move from Seoul to San Antonio to New York together now don't want anything to do with each other. That is, until June gets cancer and Jane becomes the only one who can help her. Flung together by circumstance, housing woes and family secrets, Will the sisters learn more about each other than they're willing to confront? And what if while helping June, 
Jane has to face the fact that maybe she's sick too. And those are all of the books for today. I would love to do another one of these videos next year so if you do have any recommendations for other books and other books with like mental health representation that you've read please do let me know and leave them in the comments down below. I do hope that you liked the video, do give it a like if you did, subscribe down below if you'd like to see more content like this and hopefully I will see you next time. Bye!